This video was made in partnership with Seeking Alpha. Typically when I have a good stock pick and all jokes aside, sometimes that does happen, it's usually not because some great idea just magically popped into my head. It's because I read from the expert authors over at Seeking Alpha and I utilize their artificial intelligence called the Quant, which can analyze stocks better than any human can. Click the link in the description in the pinned comment to learn more and to cash in on a huge discount that lasts a lifetime. But in this video, we're not going to talk about great stock picks. We're going to talk about one of my worst and most embarrassing stock picks ever. It also happened to be one of my first. If you ever have some of those moments in your head that just replay and you cringe every time, this is one of those. I started investing shortly after my 18th birthday, so we're talking very late 2008 or early 2009. Now this was right in the middle of the biggest stock market crash since at least 2000. And I remember my cousin telling me, hey man, you should, you should buy Ford. It's really cheap right now. It's only about $2. And I was like, I don't know, man. I've only got $200 of birthday money and about $200 I made washing dishes at some rib joint in New Jersey called the Memphis Pig Out. I don't know if that $400 is going to get me to where I want to be. So I was convinced that the real money was going to be made with penny stocks. Yeah, they're penny stocks. You know, uh, companies that can't get listed on NASDAQ, they don't have enough capital. Their shares trade here. Penny stocks? Now this is long before I or anybody else in the real world had their eyes on Bitcoin. Now back then you could have bought a thousand Bitcoin for about a dollar, but that's not what I was looking at at the time. Instead, I was really excited about these penny stocks. And I remember telling my aunt, if I can just take this $400 and turn it into 8,000 by the time I go to college, now we're in business. And to me that sounded like a totally reasonable goal. Just 20x. It's no big deal. Hunting for penny stocks brought me to Investor's Hub. That's like the old school version of Wall Street Bets. But while Wall Street Bets is all about taking risk, but at least there's some basis, like it's actually possible to make money on these, Investor's Hub is even worse. It's not all about risk, it's all about fraud. I think every single company traded on Investor's Hub's breakout boards was a penny stock pump and dump traded on the pink sheets. I and mean, we're talking about companies that you could buy 1,000 shares for a penny. And if you could get it to go up to 100 shares for a penny, you just 10 x to your portfolio. These are complete garbage companies that had absolutely no right to exist. They didn't do anything except sell shares. But I had this misconception at the time that all stocks start off as penny stocks. Microsoft never traded for 10 cents. But if you don't know what a stock split is, then you look back at their charts and you think Microsoft did start off trading at less than a dime. I had no concept of IPOs or private trading or stock splits. I thought that every stock starts off by trading as a penny stock. So within these sub one cent shares, I thought I was combing through the next generation of big companies. The next Google, the next Microsoft was somewhere in Investors Hub's breakout boards. Now in the beginning, I did get burned a few times. I got burned on Xinhua China. That was a Chinese newspaper company that went bankrupt before it ever sold a single newspaper. And there was also Neuron Sport. It was this rollerblade company that tried to make new type of rollerblades where the wheels would move a little bit differently so that they could go over lumps a little bit better. I don't think they ever actually produced skates, but it sounded like a good idea. So whatever, I just threw money at it and it all disappeared. But if you throw darts at a board enough times, eventually you're gonna hit a bullseye. And that's what happened to me. I doubled my money a couple of times on some cheap penny stocks I don't even remember the name of, and I got overconfident. And like a lamb to the slaughter, I walked directly into Sponge Tech Delivery Systems, a company that not only deceived me, but deceived the entire American sporting industry. This company was owned by CEO Michael Metter and his sidekick CFO Steven Moskovitz. Now this leadership team had already been involved in fraud in the past, but did my DD turn that up? No. Was it on the breakout boards on Investors Hub? No. So of course that went right over my head. All I saw was a pair of middle-aged men that had this great idea. They were going to make these nice big sponges for your car, for your house, for your sporting goods, for your dog, already preloaded with soap. All you had to do was add water and you were ready to go. Brilliant idea. And even better, sometimes they were shaped like SpongeBob. The company just kept announcing these huge sales, $20 million of sales to some Chinese baseball company, $10 million of sales to some little league group. Things really started to come together for them when they started advertising at these huge sporting events. You have MLB games, the Giants versus the Mets, with sponge tech billboards just splattered all the way across the whole warning track. It got a big shout out from the announcers when Carlos Beltran caught a fly ball right in front of a sponge tech advertisement. It was getting a lot of attention. They even sponsored this indie car company. They were at a big tennis match. You couldn't throw a rock without hitting a sponge tech advertisement for a, for a good six month span uh, in, in any major sporting event. They were all over the place. Just the advertising budget alone would convince you that this company was doing extremely well. And to make sure that people actually wanted to buy their stock and not just their product, because remember the whole point here 
was to get people to buy their stock. They got into these talk shows, these money talk shows, where they were just announcing how much money they had been making, how great their company was doing. Well, that didn't actually play out the way they described. But before we get that far, I just want to watch their advertisement real quick. Let's let's watch Sponge Tech's ad. When is a sponge not a sponge? When it's a complete car wash and waxing system with a soap and wax built in. This is not a sponge. This is a complete dog washing and shampoo system. This is not a sponge. This is an all-in-one Incredible household sponge. cleanup system. This is not a sponge. When is a sponge not a sponge? When it's a SpongeTech high-tech cleaning system. SpongeTech's patented soap infusion process has perfected the way you clean everything in your life from now on. SpongeTech's non-toxic ingredients means it... Rep That's what I thought was this amazing, innovative product. This giant sponge was going to change everything. And best of all, it was trading for just two cents. And you had people on these message boards talking about how it was going to go to a dollar. Now, I thought these were real analysts calling for a dollar, but it turns out these were just, these were just pumpers. Right? Anybody who disagreed with them was immediately labeled a basher. Basher is an old school term for people who spread FUD. This is before we had cryptocurrency. So if you were labeled a basher, that would be like being called a FUDster now. But I thought this was a great opportunity. So I asked my mom and my dad for some money. And my dad in particular was skeptical because he had bought into some penny stocks in the 1980s. He got into Puma Holdings or Puma Industries, something like that. This was an oil company that failed to find oil and therefore their company went bankrupt. After that investment failed, he and my grandfather got into this other company called a Diotenaceous Earth, or it was a company that made a Diotenaceous Earth. That's an ingredient in cat litter. But for one reason or another, they weren't able to produce, so that company also went bankrupt. With those back-to-back -back companies going bankrupt, my dad never invested in another company again in his entire life. But I promised my mom and dad that I could double their money in a week. So eventually they said, all right, here's $200, go have fun. So I took their $200 and my own $200 that I got from washing dishes over the course of like a month, and I threw it down on sponge tech delivery systems. If I could just hold off, until the stock went to a dollar, just like all the pumpers were calling for, then I would hit that $8,000 goal. Within a week, the stock was at eight cents and the whole position had gone up to like $1,600. That was an enormous gain for me. But of course I didn't cash out. Instead, I ended up buying a whole bunch of sunglasses, like really decent sunglasses. And then I took my friends out to an all-you-can-eat feast at Chili's. Just unlimited sides, everything's on me. So I probably spent a good $250 just on all that. It really wasn't a good way to handle your gains, but deep down inside, I knew that $8,000 was waiting for me. This $250, no big deal. And then I went home that night, and I <laughs> looked up Sponge Tech, and it was like this perfect candy cane shape, this perfect hook, where it rose through early in the day, and then it just started tanking. I remember looking at it and I said really loud, what the f And my mom called down the stairs, Michael, watch your language. My friend John was standing right next to me and he just instinctively said, oh my God, look at that stock. And the thing just, it went down from eight, it went up to like 10 cents that day and then crashed down from four. So it went from going up 20% to down 50%. From between the time that we sat down at Chili's to the time I got home, the stock lost 50%. Now in the penny stock world, that's, that's normal. That's expected behavior. But for me, I just, I looked at it and I just zoned out. I had, you know, I didn't think of it as I had still doubled my money from two cents to four. I thought about it as I had just lost money from eight cents to four. I lost 50%. So that idea, that's what turns you into a bag holder. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was not willing to sell at double my money. I wanted my 8,000. And you know, I did what a lot of people do when they're in disbelief. They go find themselves this little corner where they can go and hunker down and just, and just dive right into their own cognitive dissonance. Right in front of me, it was telling me it was time to dump this stock. But instead of actually using what my eyes and my ears were telling me, I went right back onto the message boards. And I saw people giving an explanation. They said, well, today is Friday. People typically dump their stocks on Friday so that they can fund their weekend events. And I kind of knew that was a bunch of BS, but... It did also make sense to me because I just pre-spent my gains on sunglasses and food for my friends. So it stands to reason that other people might do the same. Now where I really ran into a problem was that my takeaway from that experience was you have to sell your shares before you spend your money. That was my takeaway, this whole thing, that's what I got out of it. Even though these pumpers kept people dumping money in for just a little bit longer, eventually they couldn't hold on anymore. Within the next couple of weeks, just as I was getting ready to go to college, Sponge Tech revealed that it was under SEC investigation and that its CEO was going to be in, was possibly going to be indicted on fraud. 
it came out that Sponge Tech was just falsifying these $20 million orders. In fact, all those orders were from Moskowitz and Metter just buying from Sponge Tech themselves with their other shell companies. So there really was no transaction taking place. It was just them buying from themselves and then presenting it like it was a legitimate sale. The SEC suspended trading and then the dominoes just started falling down. So just as I was getting into college, before my first Halloween there, Sponge Tech SPNG became SPNGQ, the Q indicating that the company is bankrupt. Now with fraud like that, you think somebody's going to jail, but the CEO ended up getting probation and the CFO, he stayed on the hook a little bit longer, but he still walked out with probation because he cooperated the entire time. The reality is in the United States, you don't have to go to jail if you're rich, you just get probation. If you get caught with drugs and you're poor, you go to jail. If you get caught with drugs and you're rich, you go to rehab. The same thing is true when you commit fraud. Now there's an exception every once in a while, but even when a, a big executive gets a, an SEC violation and goes to jail for seven years, they usually only end up having to perform about 50% of the sentence. This is just another example of that. People on Investors Hub are still talking about sponge tech. And it looks like there's only one guy left who's really still pulling at litigation his name is Jay Booth, and I don't know how much money he lost, but he must have lost a lot because we're talking about a 10-year-old problem that he's still chasing down. But the poor guy, he's not getting his money back. It's just the end of the road here. My parents were pretty understanding that I lost all their money, and I think they kind of saw it coming, but it became really embarrassing when my grandfather, my mother's father, started roasting me. And it's really embarrassing when a, a guy in his late 80s is basically telling you that you're out of touch and you trade like shit. So that was a tough one for me to digest. I did give up on penny stocks late into my freshman year and I started this new strategy that consisted of typing in three or four random letters until you find a ticker that you can afford and then you buy it. So I was doing that for a little while. And in 2010, that's pretty much all you had to do. You just had to type in random letters, buy, and then you would make money off of it. So for a little while that worked and it did outperform penny stock trading. The moral of the story is this. We all screw up, we all make mistakes, we do things that are embarrassing. The fact that we can look back on our past and cringe about it means that we are now better than we were back then. If you're looking at your past and you are not cringing at least a little bit, that means that you have not grown since then. Since none of us are perfect people, we should all be able to think of something in our past that we wish we could have done a little bit better. And the fact that we can do that means that we are growing as people. And that's really what matters. Stay the course, keep getting better, and eventually you will come out on top. If you guys enjoy my penny stock stories, I can certainly tell you a lot more of the big gaffes and mistakes I made. Coinbase might be one of those. Just let me know in the comments. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.